Good evening, everyone. Um, I hope you are having a good day as so far. Today's chapter is chapter 23, uh, titled Berea and Athens. Again, uh, this is about Paul's experience as he goes about doing his missionary work. So this chapter is based on um, Acts chapter 17, uh, verses 11 to 34. Before we start, uh, let's uh, pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for giving us the wisdom to learn about you, Father. Father God, as we come closer by learning about you, Father, let us reflect your life in us so that people around us will know that there's something different about us only because Jesus lives in us. And they would be drawn closer to you, Lord. And when you come again, Father, they will also be saved in your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I am going to read um, these verses so that you get an idea. If you didn't have a chance to read the chapter, we'll go over together. So that's Acts chapter 17, verses 11 to 34. Um, so it begins at ministering at Berea. So these were more fair-minded than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness and searched the scriptures daily to find out whether these things were so. Therefore, many of them believed, and also not a few of the Greeks, prominent women as well as men. But when the Jews from Thessalonica learned that the word of God was preached by Paul at Berea, they came there also and stirred up the crowds. Then immediately the brethren sent Paul away to go to the sea, but both Silas and Timothy remained there. So those who conducted Paul brought him to Athens, and receiving a command for Silas and Timothy to come to him with all speed, they departed. Now, while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was provoked within him when he saw that the city was given over to idols. Therefore, he reasoned in the synagogue with the Jews and with the Gentile worshippers and in the marketplace daily with those who happened to be there. Then certain Epicurean and Stoic philosophers encountered him, and some said, What does this babbler want to say? Others said, He seems to be a proclaimer of foreign gods, because he preached to them Jesus and the resurrection. And they took him and brought him to the Areopagus, saying, May we know what this new doctrine is of which you speak? For you are bringing some strange things to our ears. Therefore, we want to know what these things mean. For all the Athenians and the foreigners who were there spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. Then Paul stood in the midst of the Areopagus and said, Men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are very religious, for as I was passing through and considering the objects of your worship, I even found an altar with this inscription, To the unknown God. Therefore, the one whom you worship without knowing him, I proclaim to you. God, who made the world and everything in it, said, He is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands. Nor is he worshipped with men's hands, and as though he needed anything, since he gives to all life, breath, and all things. And he has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on all the face of the earth, and has determined their pre-appointed times and the boundaries of their habitation, so that they should seek the Lord in the hope that they might grope for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being." As also some of, our, some of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. Therefore, since we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the divine nature is like gold or silver or stone, something shaped by art and man's devising. Truly these times of ignorance God overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to repent, because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained. He has given assurance of this to all by raising him from the dead. From when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked, while others said, We will hear you again on this matter. So Paul departed from among them. However, some men joined him and believed. Among them, Dionysius the Aeropagite, a woman named Damaris, and others with them. So the chapter talks um, about the same things that we just read. Some of the interesting things I noted is that um, although Paul was a missionary, although Paul was a disciple closely related to Jesus, in, he had such communion with him, there were times that he felt lonely too. And this chapter points out that he felt lonely as well. 
And the other point that I wanted to bring it out is that um, it is easy to reach men who are men and women who are poor and uh, who are humble than uh, men who are intelligent and cultured who think they know everything. It is harder to reach those kind of people. And the other important thing is that whoever says anything to you, it is very important that you have to go and look and search for yourself and be convinced. It is not a human being's word that you're going to take because in the last days, human beings are going to say many things. And are you going to believe them or are you going to search the scriptures for yourself? If they do not speak according to the scriptures, there is no light in them. We have to know that. So that's what is pointed out in this chapters as well. And um, the other thing is, um, when you labor for God, you need somebody with you as well. And when you see that Paul is sending for uh, Timothy and Silas, right, to labor with him. And uh, it is not a shame to ask when people, when you're doing things for God to help you out. And that's very important for us because many times when we do things on our own, we may get discouraged, we may get tired physically. So you need somebody to help you, give you that uh, support, emotional support as well as physical support. And that is one of the reasons that we as believers come to church week after week because when you look at others, you get strengthened too. So with that thought in mind, let us go to um, question number one. Yes, read my please. It's, uh, uh, that's why disciples, uh, when you look at in the Bible, they went two by two. Yes. You know, so they help each other and they, uh, when they, somebody is down, they strengthen one another. Yes. So that is the reason. Yeah. There is strength in numbers. Yes. Who wants to read question number one? Yes, Paul. What kind of, what kind of people were the people in Berea. Yeah, so what kind of people are they? Yeah, is that the right way to pronounce it? Berea? Berea. Okay. Okay. Um, these, uh, they were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. Therefore, many of them believed, also were of honorable women, which were Greeks, and of men, not a few. The minds of the Bereans were not mar narrowed by prejudice. They were willing to investigate the truthfulness of the doc doctrines preached by the apostles. They studied the Bible, not from curiosity, but in order that they might learn what had been written concerning the prime promised Messiah. Daily they searched the inspired records, and as they compared the scripture with, uh, scripture, with scripture, heavenly angels were beside them, enlightening their minds and impressing their hearts. Yes, so we covered both one and two, um, that's fine. So they were Jews, they were Greeks, they were noble people, be better people than Thessalonica people, right? And they also searched the scriptures and they, they were aware of the Messiah coming and that's why they, when Paul said, uh, talked about the Messiah, he, the, he, they went and searched the scriptures so that they could uh, understand what Paul was telling is the truth or not. Yes. Searching by scripture, by scripture, that is uh, uh, that is very important. Uh, even when we listen or anything, then we have to go back and look at the words and things like that. That's what the William Miller uh, they did it. It is uh, uh, they are waiting for second coming. Jesus is coming. Then they looked at it. They went and they looked the scriptures. What what they were looking for. Is it the, over here in the earthly or in the heavenly? So that's how they did it over here also. They searching the scripture daily. Yes, yes. Because um, there's a saying that, right? You give a man a fish and he will be satisfied for that meal. But if you teach him to fish, he will be satisfied for the rest of his life. And so it is. When somebody gives a meal, a spiritual meal, talks about God, you are satisfied for that moment. But what happens to the next meal? What if, what if that person is not giving you the next meal? You should be in a position to, to get the meal by yourself. And that meal is scriptures. Right? So 
Number three, what, would it be good to follow the example of the Bereans? What do you think? Yes, definitely, yes. And uh, the Bereans, searching the scriptures daily, and they compared with God's word, the messages brought them, there would, there would today be a large number of loyal to the precepts of the God's love. So if we follow Bereans' uh, ways of learning, that we would search the scriptures daily, understand it. So when somebody comes to question you, you are in a position to answer them and you know why you believe what you believe. And so you will be loyal to the scriptures, you will be loyal to God and looking at you, there would be many more people attracted towards God. Mm -hmm. The book also, it says it's uh, heavenly angels were beside them. You know, when you uh, search the scripture honestly and uh, God will send uh, uh, his angels also, we, uh, he, yes. enlighten our mind, you know, it is, uh, but only thing we have to do our part openly and to spend time daily. Yes, and also you have to ask God to enlighten you. What you're reading, you would understand. Because if you read superficially, you're not going to understand. If you read superficially, you're going to, go, going to get bored because these are deeper concepts, deeper meanings that God has put it forth for us. It, it, has to, it is like, a, um, like that person in the Bible who went and uh, bought this field, sold everything and bought this field for the, for the pearl that is uh, buried in there. So the precious truths are buried. It is not there lying superficially for you to just pick it up just where you half a sadly read it. So this is precious promises that is embedded in the Bible. So you have to prayerfully ask God to guide you so that you would understand what you're reading. And when you understand it and it, it registers in your mind for the rest of your life. Yes, number four, uh, what did some of the Jews of Thessalonica do to interfere with Paul's plans? We got to be very careful when we are reading and understanding scriptures and we are talking about them, there would be people who would come and interfere with your thoughts and your beliefs. And that's exactly what these um, Jews from Thessalonica did. Let's see what they did. The unbelieving Jews of Thessalonica, they filled with jealousy and hatred of the apostles and not content with having driven them from their own city, followed them to Berea and aroused against them the excitable passions of the lower class. And this is true even in this day and age because people are going to mock at you for what you believe in and they are going to gather together and harass you for what you're believing. So you have to be standing firm and God will give you the strength to stand firm to defend what you believe in. So you would not be carried away by the people who are going to mock at you. There would come a time that people are going to really mock at you for being a Christian, for doing the right things and following God's laws, following God's commands and keeping the Sabbath. Yes? Yes. Let's go to number five. Who wants to read number five? Oh, yes. Oh, okay. Anthony and then Paul for the next one. Yes. Okay, five. Uh, once in Athens, why did Paul send for Silas and Timothy? On arriving to Athens, the apostle sent the Berean brethren back with a message to Silas and Timothy to join him immediately. Timothy had come to Berea prior to Paul's departure and with Silas had remained to carry on the work so well begun there and to instruct the new converts in the principles of the faith. Yes, so it is very important. Um, when people come to the truth, to the knowledge of God, they get baptized and then uh, they go their business, right? If these new converts are not grounded in faith, they, they can easily be shaken off. There are so many temptations that come, testing their beliefs, testing their faith. 
So if, if nobody else, else is supporting them spiritually, they can fall away. So it is very important for the new believers to be strengthened. And how do they do that is by the others. Like if you read here, Paul had um, asked uh, Silas and Timothy to be there. And so many places that they have believers who have already uh, got converted and they had to be strengthened. So the other apostles were going there, staying with them, encouraging them so that they would be fully grounded in faith. And that's what is very important. And that's what Paul um, had asked uh, Silas and Timothy to do. Um, and then he, Paul wanted them to come back. So when we, when we have baptisms, we used to have the new believers class. I know this COVID came for the past two years. Things were not functioning like how it used to be. We used to have, uh, I don't know, Anthony, if you remember or whether you came across, we used to have new believers class right in the front and the pastor would be teaching them because they, they, are, they are like um, new people who have accepted the truth, but they need more meat so as to um, get more strengthened. They need the solid food and, and the pastors or anyone else would be teaching that class, the new believers. And that's what they were doing it here. The new converts had to be grounded in their faith. And so Silas and Timothy were there um, at that time. And so Paul uh, asked them to come back because Paul feels lonely and he wants some encouragement so that they can come and carry out the work uh, in Athens. Any other comments? It, it came to my mind uh, for the new believers, uh, then when you do that, uh, strengthen them, then do that. It came to my mind, it is a spring season it is uh, when you put the plant, the plant, uh, if you are not taking care of it, is going to die soon. Yes. You know, you take care of it, you nourish it, you uh, take the weeds out, this and that, until the roots are strongly in the ground. Yes. It's the same kind of things. It's uh, for a new believer. So we have to provide them that kind of nourishment. nourishment. You know, if there is no nourishment, then... It's, it's a human nature. It's a easily we can follow. Yes, yes. And also when you notice Paul uh, writes letters to those churches, right? Even when he is not there physically, he writes letters encouraging them so that they would be grounded. Yes. Um, number six, what kind of people were the Athenians? Yes, Paul. Okay, uh, the uh, city of Athens was the, metrop uh, the metropolis of heathendom, heathendom. Here Paul didn't meet with an ignorant, credulous populace as at Lystra, Lystra, but with a people famous for their intelligence and culture. Everywhere, statues of their gods and of the deified heroes of history and poetry met the eye, while magnificent Magnificent architecture and paintings represented the national glory and the popular worship of heathen deities. The senses of the people were entranced by the beauty and splendor of art. On every hand, sanctuaries and temples involving untold expense reared their massive forms. Victories of arms and deeds of celebrated men were commemorated by sculpture, shrines, and tablets. All these made Athens a vast gallery of art. Yes, they were intelligent. They, they were very smart people. They had uh, love for art, architecture, sculptures. They had everything, so to speak. So that those were the kind of people there. So like as, as I mentioned before, people who are um, intelligent, so to speak, they do not recognize that the intelligence is God-given. The wisdom that God gives, everything God gives, they don't realize that. And so it is harder to reach the people who are intelligent to a certain extent, but real intelligence lies in the fact that they recognize God and they recognize that the wisdom and the intelligence comes from them, from God himself. But the people who are, um, you know, in the world who think they are smart people 
and they have wealth, it is harder to reach those people there because they feel that they're self-sufficient in every way and they don't need God. So that's a sad thing that uh, they, rec they don't recognize that they need anything else uh, besides what they have in life. They don't know the truth. They don't recognize God and they don't follow God's instructions even when people come to them. So the Athens, uh, people in Athens were similar to that. They had everything that they needed and they worshipped the idols over there. Um, I don't know if you recall, um, when I was a Hindu, I worshipped idols too because I thought that the deities are gods themselves. And I used to give food for the idols, put food for the idols and, you know, put garlands of flowers and all those things. And I, when this, when I read this chapter, I, not just this chapter, even before I recognized that, how can these uh, idols made out of stone or wood or clay be God? How can it be? You are making it out of your own hands and they cannot speak, they cannot uh, move from one place to another until you take the statue and put it in a different place. They don't have any arms, they don't do anything, they are blind, they are deaf. How can those statues be God? You see what I mean? If you think deeply, they, they cannot be God. And the Athens people were believing that those are gods. Yes? Um. I don't know where I read it, it might be in the resources, but uh, um, I read that uh, you could pass by, uh, uh, if you were walking in Athens, you could pass, would pass by a hundred idols before you need, meet another person. That's how many idols there were. Yeah. So, um, number seven. Who wants to read number seven? Why was Paul's spirit stirred in Athens? Paul looked upon the beauty and the grandeur surrounding him and he saw the city whole given to idolatry. His spirit was stirred with jealousy for God, whom he saw dishonored on every side and his heart was drawn out in pity for the people of Athens, who now were standing there, intellectual, uh, intellectual culture were ignorant of the true God. You know, it is uh, they are surrounded. God blessed them with uh, so much intelligence and everything, but they lost. They doesn't know the true God. You know. Yes, they did not um, know the true God. You're they right. Did not. Yes. And that's that's why God had told um, that we have to do our job. Paul was a disciple, and he went about. Uh, missionary journeys to tell the people he did not decide for himself that if if the city was rich if the people were intelligent that he should not go there right he followed god god's instructions and he went wherever god had led him and and even though uh, if you read the chapter you'd notice that even though the people in athens they did not believe many or most of them did not believe there were one or two souls that were converted for god so we don't judge, so we just follow God's uh, leading in our lives. So even if one soul is saved for God, and that's a great thing. So we have to follow God's instructions. He said, go make disciples for me, go everywhere. And that's what he said, and that's what we should be doing also. Okay, number eight. Why did Paul have a feeling of solitude? Why did he feel lonely? Yes, Paul. Uh, is that uh, Paul longed for the sympathy and aid of his fellow laborers. So far as human friendship was concerned, he felt himself to be utterly alone. In his epistle to the Thessalonians, he expresses his feelings in the words, left at Athens alone. Obstacles that were apparently insurmountable presented themselves before him, making it seem almost hopeless for him in uh, to attempt to reach the hearts of the people. Yeah, that can happen to us in, the, in this day and age too. If you are 
trusting in God, you want to believe in everything that God says to you, you want to hold on to it, you could, be fe you could feel lonely too because when you're presenting this kind of thing, there may be people who are saying to you, it's okay, I mean, it's okay to go about, you know, compromise in, in certain things. You might feel lonely too. Even today, you can feel lonely besides being in a group of people. So when you have that kind of feeling, you always have to remember that God has not left you alone. He did not forsake you. You just have to hold on to him and he will guide you through. You just have to believe everything that he has told you and believe and do everything that he has told you. You're not compromising in one thing and you're following the rest of the things. Then you're going to feel lonely. You will have those moments as well. And Paul felt lonely. He needed somebody to encourage him. And many times we feel like that too. We need somebody to encourage us. We break down too. Just like Paul wanted uh, sympathy and aid from his fellow believers, we also need that from time to time. Otherwise, we cannot survive also this, this world with so many pressures uh, that is making us almost losing our footage, right? Obstacles will come. Obstacles are not going to leave you alone. Just because you are the child of God, you're going to have everything presented to you as like a bed of roses, your life is not going to be smooth. Your life is going to have troubles and tr uh, trials that you have to face. But with God, you can go through all of them. And at times, you need true, true God's children to help you out. Yes. Yeah, it's, uh, that's why it is uh, Bible, some of the Bible verses, it's uh, like uh, encouraging promises. When, when we are... Uh, that kind of discouraging moments, uh, then we can bring that Bible verses to our memory. That's why sometimes we have to memorize some of the Bible verses. So it will, yes, it will strengthen us. At the same time, you can reach out to people, those you can trust and things, and you can share with them. They will encourage you. Yes, and that's why it says here you have to daily search your scriptures. When you search the scriptures, not only do you know the truth about Jesus um, and everything else, but you will also be encouraged uh, with these promises that God has put forth for us, right? If you do not know, I will never leave you nor forsake you, how are you going to claim that promise when you're down, right? When you're so down, if nobody is there for you, you are claiming that promise. God said he is not going to leave me. He is not going to forsake me. He is going to carry me through these problems that I am facing. So that's why it's important that you have a grip. You have a footage on Jesus only. Human beings can fail you, but God will not fail you. Number nine. Um, Philosophically, Stoics value virtue and wisdom, while Epicureans value pleasure and tranquility. What do these groups of people think of Paul's intellect? Yes, Paul. Basically, they were impressed. Um, it says here, uh, they saw that he had a store of knowledge even greater than their own. His intellectual power, meaning Paul's intellectual power, commanded the respect of the learned, while mm -hmm. his earnest logical reasoning and the power of his oratory held the attention of all in the audience. His hearers recognized the fact that he was no novice, but was able to meet all classes with convincing arguments in support of the doctrines he taught. Thus, the apostle stood undaunted, meeting his opposers on their own ground, magic matching logic with logic, philosophy with philosophy, and eloquence with eloquence. Yes, when you recall um, the disciples of Jesus, Peter, unlearned people, they were talking in such a way that all the other people around them were astonished. And they said, these people are Galileans. They were fishermen. How do these people speak like that? And it, it said that they were with Jesus, and that is the reason why they were talking how they were talking. So when we come across people as well, when we speak about things, when we know what is the truth, 
people would be astonished. God's vessels are humble people who do not have pride, who completely trust in him. And those are the people that will be elevated because they completely uh, rest on God. They depend on God for everything. And so Paul, when he speaks, they, they, they know that Paul is, uh, is a very intelligent person and a learned person, and they could listen to him. And he knew all the doctrines. Number 10, how did Paul deal with his heathen opponents? I can do it. Yes. All right. His heathen opponents called his attention to the fate of Socrates, who became, uh, who became, because he was a setter forth of strange gods, had been condemned to death, and they counseled Paul not to endanger his life in the same way. But the apostles' discourses riveted the attention of the people, and his unaffected wisdom commit, uh, commanded their respect and admiration. He was not silenced by the science or the irony of the philosophers and satisfying, satisfying themselves that he was determined to accomplish his ever uh, among them. And at all hazards to tell his story, they decided to give him fair hearing. Yeah, when you are... Um speaking for God, right, you will have many opponents. And they were threatening Paul. They were saying, uh, look at the fate of Socrates. They, they killed him, right? So they were saying to him that if you are talking about strange gods and strange doctrines, you better remember what we did to Socrates. So Paul, was he silenced by that? He was not silenced by the science or the irony of the philosophers and satisfying themselves that he was determined to accomplish his errand among them at, and at all hazards to tell his story, they decided to give him a fair hearing. So when you are strong, when you know what you believe, there would come times that you would be asked to defend the beliefs that you have and you would be given a fair hearing. At that time, you can say, uh, and people might be changed by how much you know about God and what is your life reflecting. Any other thoughts? Yes, Paul? Yeah, um, rereading Desire Pages. Okay, and uh, I'm up to where he uh, was found in the temple at the age of 12, mm -hmm. and uh, the people, you know, the rabbis and teachers there, they were just totally astonished by how much he knew yeah. about God and how much they just sat in awe of him, uh, you know, of Jesus. And uh, it's sad that they didn't realize who he was. They were just saying, how did he learn all this stuff? How does he know all this stuff? He they didn't for a minute consider that he was the Messiah. Yeah. But they were astonished by uh, his intelligence about the scriptures and, you know, religious issues. Yeah. If we do not learn um, from the scriptures, we would not have any knowledge of these things. So that's why it is important for us to learn from the scriptures. Number 11, what type of people did Paul meet on the sacred spot in Athens, Mars Hill? What type of people did he meet there? Yes. You know, it, it's, a, it's interesting when you read the, in the book, Mars Hill, mm -hmm. uh, it says this was one of the most sacred spots in all Athens. Mm -hmm. You know, it is kind of like, I don't know, it's kind of, Nowadays, it's a court, probably like a judgment to be served in that particular place, that kind of things, I don't know. It was in this place that matters connected with the religion were often carefully considered mm -hmm. by men who acted as a final judges. Mm -hmm. 
on all more important moral as well as civil questions so that is kind of they are considering very sacred place yeah. and to take the judgment uh to the issues this place is uh, uh, around him gathered poets artists philosophers mm -hmm. the scholars and sages of athens who thus addressed him and they are asking may we know what this new doctrine where of thou speaking is yeah so that's what they are asking if what the bring us such a strange thing to our ears we would know there of what these things mean yeah you know that over there all these people were sitting it looks like highly scholars yeah so what did paul point to and comment during his dissertation what was paul pointing to yes anthony pointing to their uh, statuary and idols he declared that god could not be likened to forms of of uh, to forms of man's devising these graven images could not in the faintest sense represent the glory of jehovah he reminded them that these images had no life mm -hmm. but were controlled by human power moving only when the hands of men moved them and therefore those who worshiped them were in every way superior to that which they worshiped true because they were idols who don't know anything right and they were worshiping these idols thinking that they are gods and many people in this world still do that right and sometimes they give you uh, give you this um, argument saying that uh, we are not worshiping idols idols per se but uh, we are thinking of god and we have to have something in front of our minds to to imagine to bring our focus to and that is why we keep these idols i don't know if you guys have heard that um i've heard people say that it's not the idols that we are worshiping it is something to keep us um you know focused that's what they say so but you know that uh, god is spirit and you cannot have god contained in the wooden or the stone or um clay things that you cannot make god and you think that is god right so that's what they were doing they were um having a lot of idols Mm -hmm. and worship the creator not the created things yes. you know yeah yeah in many cultures still they worship the sun and the moon um and i wanted to bring to your attention that uh, my mom when she had to make fried things right you have a big wok and you pour oil and then you fry things right and that's kind of uh, if you're not careful you can bo you burn your hands and you know you can have accidents so my mom always uh, put that uh, walk in and pour the oil and everything and she will you know do like this that means she's praying to that the vessel that it shouldn't cause any accidents that it shouldn't cause any burns because boiled oil hot oil can burn your skin completely right so she in her mind she thought that if she did that then that god will protect her from having that to this day i whenever i do you know fry things i remember that and i think to myself how how could this pan of oil be god and protect me it's god who is protecting me when i'm doing these things right so people have a lot of things that they think it is god and worship and when you know the truth your mind says that that cannot be god how can that be god right so that is why you have to be grounded in the scriptures you know what is the truth and you can defend yourself for what you believe in yes any other comments okay let's go to um number 13 why did paul have so little success in dealing with the athenians why did he have so little success their pride of intellect and mm -hmm. human wisdom may be found the reason why the gospel message met with the comparatively little success among the athenians 
Yeah, the worldly wise men who come to Christ as poor lost sinners will become wise unto salvation. But those who come as distinguished men, extolling their own wisdom, will fail of receiving the light and knowledge that he alone can give. So pride, you think that you are very smart, will not take you anywhere. So it says here, no eloquence of words, no force of argument can convert the sinner. The power of God alone can apply the truth to the heart. He who persistently turns from this power cannot be reached. The Greeks sought after wisdom, yet the message of the cross was to them foolishness because they valued their own wisdom more highly than the wisdom that comes from above. So thus Paul met the paganism of his day. His labors in Athens were not wholly in vain. I had told you, even though most people rejected the truth, there were a couple of them who accepted, and that's what it is. His labors in Athens were not wholly in vain. Dionysius, one of the most prominent citizens, and some others accepted the gospel message and united themselves fully with the believers. So this tells us that you do what God tells you to do. You do not worry about the harvest because that's God's business. Yes, Lucas? Something I thought about too is like uh, when they were recruiting some of these people like in Athens who they did decide to give their life to God and stuff. I wonder if like, uh, or they probably had the thing too thinking of like how you're saying how they were kind of warning Paul of what they did to Socrates because of him voicing his things. And so uh, Paul might get in trouble. So it'd be the same thing with these new people who, these new converts, how they like when you get close to God, you'll also want to share with others. So they also probably had in mind that um, I know that there's this risk that I could get punished, I could not be sentenced to death, but I still want to give my life to God and still share the message with others. Yes, because I think of it this way. You have a container which is full of water, for example. There is no place for the water to come on. Already your container is full, right? As you empty the container is when God can fill you. Uh, you can fill more water. It's the same thing with us. When we know God and the truth, if we keep it to ourselves, that's all you are going to get, right? You're not going to fill your vessel more. But when you give that away to someone else, there is emptiness in that vessel and God will pour more and more blessings into you. So it's very important that we share the gospel to everyone else that we know, not just keep it to ourselves. And the more you share, the more you will be grounded in faith and the more blessings God will give you. And you want to reach many people for God and that's the um, command that he has given. He, Go and make disciples for me. And don't worry about the consequences. God will take care of you. God will provide what you need at that moment. So it is very important for us to trust in him completely and to believe everything that the scripture says and share it with others. Yes, Anthony, you had a comment? Yeah, so um, I, I know we talk about idols as to wooden and carved things, but this day and age, we have our idols too. We might not be worshiping the carved stones and images and sculptures and all that, but things that we consider important compared to God, we have some things, right? Material things. Many people think their jobs are um, more superior than coming to God. People think their houses, their cars, their uh, wealth, their bank accounts, the phones, they think so great of their phones, right, that that's more important than God. Talking to other people when you are prioritizing. What is your priority? If you put anything before God, it becomes an idol. It doesn't have to be a carved image. So we have to be very careful. We can think in our minds that, oh, I'm not worshiping idols like the people that I'm reading in the Bible. But 
something else in your life is that taking priority for you besides god yes uh, you know today our youth there's a uh, 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 movie idols there's a uh, um uh, music idols, TikTok. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, all, all of these things are really idols that the, the kids um, s see as uh, something so important that they, it blinds them to looking for anything else. Yes, yes. Uh, you're, you're so right. Uh, young people get carried away. Even older people get carried away with all these things, sports celebrities, movies, all these things. Does it take precedence in your life? Where is your priority? Where have you placed God in your life? Is he first for you or is he in the middle or is he last? So we have to be careful what idols we have and what idol worship we are following in our lives. The strength of those who love and serve God will be renewed day by day. So we have to remember that God will give us the strength and he will renew his blessings every day to go through that day. Uh, you just have to hold on to him. And like how, help, how Paul had preached God to everyone else, we should be doing that as well. We should not shy away. We should boldly proclaim our belief. Any other comments? This, the book it says it's a God God's truth is to shine amid the darkness that ensured our world so it is the same thing it's applied to us also we are called to carry the truth we have to be light those who are around us yes so the pe preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness but unto us which are saved it is the power of God what is it to you this evening so with that in mind uh, we have any prayer requests yes Paul I want to pray for Veronica Deval uh, unfortunately she's not doing well at all she's in intensive care and they're looking to put her into a hospice she's not doing well so please pray for her we want to pray for her yes and so, also for uh people of ukraine yes it was a terrible war yeah. yeah we did visit her yesterday last night yeah she's not doing well no. pray for her family as well for yeah, comfort definitely definitely yes any other uh, prayer requests Lucas, are you getting any prayer requests? Um, okay, as Paul mentioned, we'll pray for Ukraine and also pray for each other in our church. They need our prayers too. Pray for each and every family members in your prayers and um, hope God will strengthen us as we go through our difficult times and be saved in his kingdom. So next week we will be um, studying chapter 24, that is Corinth. That's uh, chapter 24. Corinth, and I hope you will enjoy the lesson as much as I do. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for bringing us here to learn about you, Father. Father, we are weak, but we will be strong when we trust in you, Father. Help us to trust in you each and every day. We pray for uh, Veronica's family, Lord, and for Veronica, Father. 
Give our families strength and comfort as they go through this difficult time, Lord. Give them peace, Lord. Give them the hope that Veronica will be raised up one day when you come again, Father. Father God, we also pray for ourselves, Lord. Help us to stay strong in you, Father. We pray for the people of Ukraine. This war that has damaged so many people's lives, so many things they have lost, Lord. Help us to be helpful to them in some way that would be pleasing to you, Father. Be with all our church members, Lord. Strengthen them, Father, because the trials are going to come and we have to be strong, Lord. Help us to search the scriptures daily. Bring us closer to you. Help us that we do not waver from the faith that we have known, Father. Strengthen us, Lord. Give us peace in our hearts. As we go back, give us traveling mercies and Hold on to you, Lord, until you come again, and we all can be saved in our king, in your kingdom, Father. Bless each and every one of us that have been watching online as well, Lord, and for the people who are present here, and for our church members and, and friends who are not able to be here, Father. Give them the same blessing that we have received. Strengthen us, Lord, as we go through this life. We cannot do it on our own, Father. Only with your help that we can hold on to you and be strong. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you once again. Uh, hoping to see you guys next uh, Wednesday for the lesson. Um, I am not sure. Is next Wednesday evangelistic meeting, right? So we probably will not have a prayer, regular prayer meeting. It will be evangelistic. It'll, right, right. So... Yes, so we probably will not be reading uh, chapter 24. It'll be the evangelistic meeting. Yeah, the following week we will be. There will be evangelistic session. Yes, yes. Um, I think the uh, evangelistic meeting is starting this Sabbath, right, Lucas? Okay, so it starts Friday or Saturday? This Saturday. This Saturday, not Friday evening. Okay, okay. So just to be aware of the uh, evangelistic meetings and support um, pastor as well. Thank you.